Hey everybody, Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Look what I've got. I've got the Advanced Paris PlayStream A7 Streaming Integrated Amplifier. It's beautiful, isn't it? Blue meters. Sit back, relax, and we're going to talk about this really compelling device. At Old Guy Hi-Fi, he's an audio king. Every frequency dances as he starts to sing. Old Guy Hi-Fi, where the classics revive. In the corner of cyberspace, he brings them to life. So what is the Advanced Paris Playstream A7? Well, it is designed to be kind of an all-in-one solution integrated amplifier, and it actually is more of a receiver because it does have an FM tuner in it um, and a digital audio broadcast tuner in it. So let's talk about the various features. It is rated at 115 watts into 8 ohms. They don't put a 4 ohm rating out, but when we look inside, you'll see this thing is far more robust than that 115 watts into 8 ohms may indicate. Um, it is it has the Advanced Paris High Bias, which is a neat thing. It's a little switch on the back that allows you to set the change the bias on the amplifier so for the first several watts the amplifier is running in pure class a mode now here's the interesting thing about that that has power meters on it so you can crank it up to peaks of 75 almost 80 db and those power meters really never hit much beyond a watt. So we use far fewer watts than we would think we need to when we're even just normally listening. So this gives you the benefit of having that class A sound. And then once it gets louder, obviously the class A B mode, that crossover distortion we've talked about before, doesn't become apparent because it's masked by the volume of the music and we become less sensitive to it. So it's really, really interesting. It has a super low total harmonic distortion, 0.004%. Right, nothing. So, and THD less than one percent is wonderful. So it doesn't really matter a lot. Um, it does have a built-in streaming system. It does have a built-in DAC, and it's a really good DAC. It's based on the Burr Brown PCM seventeen ninety six chip, which I like a lot because it's a twenty four bit chip. This is old school stuff. It's a twenty four bit chip, but it only oversamples at eight times, where a lot of other Delta Sigma DACs oversample as much as two hundred fifty six times. So it's far less switching noise to deal with, um, and obviously far less DSP and noise reduction that needs to be applied to the signal, which I think leaves the signal cleaner. Now it uses is Burr Brown's new advanced segment DAC architecture. And what that is, is it's designed to achieve excellent dynamics and performance, and it's designed to have better tolerance for clock jitter because on spit up inputs and things like that, there is always going to be jitter. So there's good oscillator clocks in conjunction with that Burr Brown chip so that it sounds very, very clean, and it does. We're going to spin it around and look at the back. It's got a lot of good good, good goes into and goes out is. So give me a minute to reconfigure. We're going to look at the back. Oh, you know what? Let me go ahead and real quick show you the front. Obviously, beautiful remote control, lots of functions and features. We're going to go through the menuing system on the display in another segment of the video. But the front panel is like all glass down here, and it's all touch. You'll see the screen display as I touch. And some are multifunction, you know, multiple inputs. So it's a really nice unit. It's really pretty. I think it looks great. By the way, I did try the headphone amp, and it works quite well. So what I'm going to do is reconfigure, spin it around. We're going to look at the back, and then we're going to take it over to the bench and look inside. And I'm going to come back and tell you how I think it sounds. Well, you can see here on the back of the Advanced Paris A7, the Playstream A7, it's really full featured. Phono preamp that does moving magnet, does moving coil low output and moving coil high output with the flip of a switch. It's got one, two, three, four, five line level input, CD and four auxiliary. It's got a record, which is a fixed line level out. Um, if you wanted to run out to a, you know, a tape deck or something like that, it's got a variable pre-out, so if you want to run out to a bigger amplifier. It's got an amp in, which is a home theater bypass, and it has a stereo subwoofer output, and there's the high bias switch on or off. Now, for digital inputs, we've got coax. We've got three spit if optical. This USB-A is only for updates, firmware updates to the processor inside. It has got a digital audio broadcast and FM antenna, which I've not connected. It has a USB-A, which you could plug a memory stick in, or let's say you had uh, uh, music on your phone. You could go from a lightning connector or USB-C and plug into here. It's got an RJ45 jet for network control. This is the Advanced Paris Bluetooth dongle, which allows it to communicate with the outside world um, with Bluetooth. It has 12-volt trigger in and out. This antenna is for Wi-Fi, so you can connect it to the network and use the streamer that's built in. It's got HDMI arc, and it's got two pair of speakers, A and B, master power switch, and AC power socket. 
as you can see, it's got a lot of wonderful features. This thing is really packed. I really enjoy it. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to take it over to the workbench. We're going to open it up, take a look inside, and we'll talk about how it sounds after that. So looking inside the Advanced Paris Place 3 May 7, you can see it's really well constructed. Look at that big giant toroidal power transformer. This is all the power side of it. And then it comes out and this board here underneath, because there's a layer board here, is all the preamp and pre-drivers for the output stage, voltage regulation, all that kind of stuff. On this board is kind of the digital section. There's that Burbron DAC chip. This board here is for the digital audio broadcast and FM tuner functions. This one is the wireless network card, so transmission back and forth for wireless for the streaming. And then, of course, XMOS processor, SPDIF processor, so forth and so on. It's a little hard to see, and I'll insert a photograph now. The power output devices on this, there are a total of eight. It is four output devices per channel, Darlington pair. So you have two output devices for one half of the wave, two output devices for the other half of the wave, very robust transform, uh, transistors. We've got 24,000 microfarads of capacitance. This thing is powerful and very dynamic. And as I said, or I'm going to say in the summary, that 115 watts into eight ohms is probably a conservative rating, and I bet this does a lot better. It's very robust, very well constructed. These are big, high current devices. So, what a beautiful unit. And you got to give the Advanced Paris credit for the red circuit ports. They're beautiful. They really do look pretty. And again, all through whole technology, which I'm a big fan of. All right, let me button it up. We're going to go back in the studio, and I'm going to tell you how it sounds. Well, here we are looking at not only the display on the front panel of the Advanced Paris A7, but we're looking at the app in an Android tablet. Now, the app may look familiar. It is from a third party. But if you can't develop it yourself, why not get a good one? And this is a good one. So as you can see on the display of the amplifier, it says streaming. It's paused. There's 18 seconds into a song that's 4 minutes, 46 seconds long. And it's from Beth Hirsch. And it's a song called All I Need. And I'll talk about it when we listen to sound quality because this is one of the albums I recommend. And on the tablet, you can see right now we're kind of in the main menu. At the bottom of the screen above where it says Browse Device and Settings, there is a play bar. If I touch that, that'll bring up the full song, show the album artwork, status of the song, so forth and so on, um, and so forth. So if I hit the upper left-hand corner, there's a down arrow on the app. Brings me back to the main menu. And I can set... Presets, I can have, you know, certain songs or certain tracks or internet radio or whatever uh, all set up and ready to go so I can just access them quickly. I have TuneIn, iHeart, Spotify, Tidal, Internet Radio, Napster, Cobuzz, Deezer, Amazon Music, which a lot of folks will like. And then I can manage those music services, sign in, sign out, log in, log off, whatever. I can select a source on the device, which means from this I could control and switch to CD or auxiliary or phono or whatever I wanted to. But we're going to go ahead and talk about streaming today. So you'll see on the screen, it says Beth Hirsch. If I go to Title, it'll bring up Title, and it brings up all the normal stuff. So if I go to What's New, it'll show all the stuff Title's pushing out, staff picks, things like that. And it'll show all the artwork and everything, just like you would expect in Title, but just in a slightly different interface. We're going to go ahead and go back. We're going to go back again. And we're going to, in Title here, we're going to go to where it says My Collection down toward the bottom. And this will bring up my playlist, my albums, my tracks, my artists. If we go to albums, it'll bring up a number of different albums. And a couple of these I've recommended. Um, as you can see here, there's a lot of different stuff. So we're going to go back. I can go to tracks and I can pick a track. So let's pick this track called Soothing Bliss. You'll see it change on the display of the unit. So we're going to go ahead and choose that. And it started playing. You can hear it play and it changed on the display. All right, I can't play too much of that without getting a copyright strike. I also, when I come down here and bring up the song itself, it'll show the album artwork. Down along the bottom is a slider for the volume control, or I can use the remote control. So I have a number of different ways I can do it. Now, all of the tracks listed, if I want to, on the far left-hand side next to the back uh, song back button, you'll see the random play. And all the way on the right-hand side on song skip forward, you'll see repeat. So I can have all of the same functions I would as in my title app and everything else. You'll see three dots right below the track progress line. If I touch those, it'll bring up in title 
add to a playlist, remove from my music, view the artist, view the album, make it a preset, set it as an, uh, the music that comes on when an alarm goes off if I want to. So a lot of really cool stuff. Um, we're going to go ahead and cancel that and go back to the song. And again, I'm going to go ahead and skip the track. And the next track, it'll skip and you'll see it change on the app and you'll see it change on the display on the unit. Very simple. It's super easy. It's actually really powerful and was very enjoyable to use. So I have no problem with this. You know, yeah, it's a third party, but I don't really care. It is full functioning. It makes this device really, really compelling. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop the streaming functions altogether. So the tablet image is going to go away and I'm going to pause it. I'm going to go through the menu system on the unit itself. So you get a chance to see that. So give me a second to reset. Well, here we are looking at the display on the advanced Paris. Obviously it's still in the streaming mode from previous and I'm going to go ahead and access the menuing and you can see streaming digital inputs. I can choose analog inputs, USB, digital audio broadcast, FM radio, Bluetooth, HDMI arc or system setting where I can come out and this is where I can do my network setup, which I've obviously already done. Don't need to redo. We'll go back amp in. That would be home theater bypass speaker, a B, a plus B, whatever I want. Tone setting. This is where I get bypasses on right now. If I turn it off, then I have access to bass and treble and I can change that as I see fit or I can come back out and I can go down and do balance or I can do loudness and I can turn it on or I can turn it off. If I go back up to bypass, that turns off all the tone controls and that initiates that. So we return back out. That's tone setting. ADP setting. I'm not sure what that is. STP LED mode. That would be the standby LED mode if you want to have it on or off. Um, it really doesn't matter to me. I didn't dive into this factory reset if there's an issue. Upgrade if there's an over the air upgrade you can do. And then CEC control is again for home theater, uh, excuse me, home automation control. And then of course we go back to system info and again device name and then all of the other things we return back out. And again, there's all of our inputs. So we're streaming right now and really easy to do. So we go ahead and start and we're streaming. And I, I know I can't play much of it, but there it is. So really, really nice, really compelling. And now uh, we're going to put it all back together. We're going to go in the studio and I'm going to tell you how it sounds. So the Advanced Paris PlayStream A7, as you can see from looking inside, it's really well built. Um, four output devices per channel. This thing has a lot of dynamic headroom. It has a lot of power to give and it it delivered all the time. We're going to talk about sound quality in a minute. So how did I test it? Well, honestly, most of the time I use the internal Burbron DAC. It is really good and sounds really good. So I fed it from Artivana via USB into a DDC to convert it to optical because this doesn't have an asynchronous USB input. Um, I also fed it coax off my um, CD transport, but I did an awful lot of vinyl listening on this. The folks at TIAC were kind enough to send me a TN 3B SE turntable, and that has an AT95 uh, SE cartridge on it, standard, which is quite good. So I used the moving magnet section of it. I also ran my Audio-Technica VM540 ML, and again, use the moving magnet section of the phono preamp. And then I also use my AT, and I can't remember which model it is, 9OCXEN, something like that, on the low output moving coil side of the phono preamp. And I will tell you the phono preamp in this is very good. I, if this was my permanent piece, I would not feel compelled to get a better phono preamp. It is actually that good. Uh, and you combine that with just the sound of the amplifier. It was so rewarding. As a matter of fact, one of the uh, recordings I'm gonna recommend uh, it was actually vinyl. I spun a lot of vinyl on this, but you can you can stream it digitally. So I connected it to the Big Wharfdale 12.4s, and that was very good. I connected it to the DLAC, the ELAC DBR62s, and that was very rewarding because they like a little juice, and this has got it. But for a lot of the time, I was listening to it on the Neil Blanchard Design MLTL6 stand mount transmission line speakers, and that was a wonderful combination. Now, the MLTL6 is a transmission line, and the tuning frequency for the transmission line, I think, is below 30 hertz. So while they're not hard to drive, they do want a lot of current, and this thing delivered, and it delivered beautifully. So I'll talk about sound stage and imaging and, and sound quality and all that other stuff in a second, but let me go over some of the recordings I use that I would recommend 
One of them is Mike Oldfield, Tubular Bells 3. Now this is a 1998 release and it's really interesting because it's kind of, it's really an intricate comp composition. There's a, there's rat, rat, uh, excuse me, rock, there's ambient techno, there's um, all kinds of electronica in it. It's just, there's things going on all the time. It's very, very interesting, really cool to listen to. I'm kind of very much like a Jean-Michel Jean Jarre recording, but it, you know, Mike's got his own sound. Now, one of the interesting things is, and guys old enough like me, remember 1973 when the first Tubular Bells album came out, and, you know, the one of the songs was used in the movie The Exorcist. Well, Richard Branson at the time, the billionaire now, was worked for a recording company, and I don't remember if it was Parlophone or EMI or somebody like that. Um, and he gifted Mike Oldfield a bunch of studio time. And so Mike Oldfield did Tubular Bells when he had that free studio time. And then he got everything all together, put the tapes together, and he took the tapes around and tried to sell it to all the record companies in Great Britain, and no one wanted it. So Richard Branson actually founded Virgin Records, and their inaugural, inaugural release was Tubular Bells. They founded the record, the record company just to release that album and obviously went on from there. So I just think that was an interesting kind of uh, fun fact to know and share. So the next recording I used was to get some female vocals, and it's Beth Hirsch, and her voice is amazing. And this recording, uh, Life, or uh, love is for everyone, L-I-F-E. It's from 20, 2020, and it's just it's very atmospheric. Her voice is very soaring. There is a little bit of sibilance in this recording, and I don't know if it's her voice because I have sibilance in my voice. Um, I don't know if it's her voice, the mic, the engineering, whatever, but her voice is amazing. She can really extend it. She can really just put a sweetness and a, and a vibrato. Her, her vibrato is very, very good. Just a really interesting album. It's kind of new, it's kind of techno electronic. There's some uh, kind of hip hop sort of vibe to it, or dub sort of vibe, or house music sort of vibe to it. Just all over the place. But her voice is absolutely beautiful. Now, you guys might remember Beth Hirsch back in 1998. She did a song called "All I Need," and it was on an, an album from a French band called Air. And I can't think of the name of the album. It was their debut album, and it became a big hit for them in '98, and that got her put forward, you know, into the public eye. Now this recording is from 2020, so it's much later on and her voice is wonderful, but they did a remix of All I Need on this album and it's really, really cool. It's one of my favorite tracks. So now to get some symphonic stuff, and this is one of the LPs that I used, absolutely remarkable LP. It is Anna Sophie Mutter, Herbert von Karajan in the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra. It is Mozart's Violin Concerto Number no. Three in D Major and the Violin Concerto Number no. Five in A Major, and this is a 15-year-old Anna Sophie Mutter. She is was is a virtuoso. It is remarkable to hear that young talent in this recording from 1978. This was also recorded at the Berlin Philharmonic's normal concert hall, their regular concert hall, which has amazing acoustics, and it's just a beautiful concert hall, and you can hear that sound. The imaging on this was outstanding, and I'll talk about it more a bit in a second, but the violin, the mass strings, everything was just so well reproduced. It was just remarkable. So, sonic character of this amplifier. Well, this guy lives right in my wheelhouse. It is smooth. It l tends to be warm, but it is very detailed, very dynamic. And that's a, I know that sounds like a bit of a dichotomy, but it is all of those things for sure. It is, I think, one of the best sounding uh, and certainly a compelling all-in-one box that you could get for 2000 bucks. I really, really do. This could be an end game amp for a lot of people. Um, and if I wasn't doing reviews, and I had the wherewithal to do this, I would probably own one of these things. It's that good. So from a sound standpoint, bass is very good, very detailed, very articulate, especially on the transmission line speakers because they dig really, really deep. And you can hear that. Tubular Bells has got a lot of good bass in it. Some of the Beth Hirsch stuff has really good bass in it. It's very good pace, very good detail. Um, you can follow bass lines very easily. There's plenty of power in the amplifier. You don't feel like any of the bass lines are being compressed. There's any kind of uh, reining in of the bass. It just, this thing just keeps delivering and delivering and delivering if the speakers are demanding it. So mid bass, all the way up through uh, the upper mid bass, lower mid range, male vocals, drum kits, guitars, acoustic bass, whatever, synthesizers, 
everything sounded really, really detailed, but smooth, very nice. This amplifier does ride the warm side of the neutral line, um, but it doesn't give up any detail on that until maybe way, way up on top. So everything through the mid-range was just really well presented, and I'll talk about imaging in a second, just very well presented, very natural sounding. There was never any kind of a artificial or fatigue or anything to it. Transients were very quick, and they decayed beautifully. Now, way, way up on the top end of the treble range, there might be a little softness in the amplifier, um, but I, you know what? I never missed it. The other thing, too, is... Depending on the recording, it, a lot will depend on how smooth it sounds, whether it was compressed, you know, a lot of compression was applied at the, in the recording studio. Like a lot of pop music is so um, compressed that, you know, it's all one volume level for the entire song. So the stuff I try to use has a lot of dynamics in it, and this delivered all of that. So mid-range vocals were great. Violin was amazing. And Sophie Mutter's violin is just so amazing. And the ma mass strings of the Berlin Philharmonic sounded so natural and so beautiful and so detailed, but never harsh and never strident in any way, shape, or form. So as far as imaging goes, lock solid center, way wide. That Tubular Bells album, it just room defyingly wide image. Now, a lot of that is the speaker, but I think the amplifier has to pass the uh, signal through to the speakers as unadulterated as possible so they can do what they do. And this did that. So this provided uh, all the speakers with all of the information they need to throw down the biggest image they possibly could. And it delivered on that. So huge image, good center image, very good depth. Now, instrument placement, Maybe not as laser focused as some, but I, you know what? That's recording dependent. So, you know, like the Anna Sophie Mutter, the Mozart concertos, that was recorded in 1978. Now, it's a Deutsche Grammophon recording, so they're very good. Their engineers are quite good, but I don't know how their uh, microphone placement was and so forth. So you could get a general idea where the instruments were. And for me, that's all I really care about. I want to know that the violins sound where they're supposed to be, where the violins sit, where the, the you know, violas and the cellos and the double bass and woodwinds and horns and all that stuff. I want to just know a general placement because I don't really listen to where they are. I want to listen to how they play. And this delivered, it's absolutely delivered. Transients were great, the K's were wonderful, very smooth, very good long extended decay. I just, everything about the sound of this fits my, my sonic tastes almost perfectly. Um, just remarkable how good it is. Um, I, again, this could be, this may be my product of the year. It's that impressive to me. I was really taken with this thing and I'm going to hate to send it back, but it could be that end game system for someone who wants to put together a nice, maybe total cost $5,000 system, $6,000 system, because you can pair this with expensive speakers and it'll drive them just fine. Um, the MLTL6s from Neil Blanchard, I believe, are around $2,000 a pair. Um, and it delivered, man, did it deliver. But the nice thing is when you figure out you've got a built-in streamer, you've got a built a really high quality built-in deck and a really high quality built-in moving uh, a phono preamp, you know, those are things you don't have to buy. And then add in the fact you've got this really dynamic, super clean, very detailed, very smooth sounding amplifier. Again, at 2000 bucks, I think it is an absolute value without question. Really, really nice piece. I loved it a lot. Anyway, I'm going to, sorry to see this thing go. I'm going to have to pack it up soon. I don't really want to. <laughs> Maybe they'll let me keep it for a little while longer. Anyway, that's the Advanced Paris Playstream A7 all-in-one streaming integrated amplifier with blue VU meters. I really love that. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you're willing to give me a like and your subscription. I would appreciate that. If you wish to support the channel, there's a thank you button at the bottom of the video window. Also too, there are membership links in the pinned comment and in the video description. Now there will be a link um, I don't have a link with Advanced Paris. There will be a link to Skylabs Audio in Des Moines, Iowa. Kevin Mall, our buddy there, he is an authorized Advanced Paris reseller, and he can ship nationwide. And if you are interested in doing something with Advanced Paris, please reach out to him. He's a great guy. You're supporting a local small family business. They're wonderful people there. Um, and he can you know, reach out to Kevin. He'll take care of you on it. Um, so there will be a link to his store for this. There are uh, affiliate links from Amazon and so forth in the rest of the video description. My playlist, please continue to share playlists with me. 
please comment. Let me know what you think. Are you looking for something like this? Um, are you, you know, where are you at in your journey? Are you finished or, you know, are you just starting out? Do you want to move up from some of the quote unquote fun five category products into something better? Obviously, it depends on your budget. This thing is, a, to me, is a Best Buy, and I'm very, very pleased with it. Anyway, that's everything, I think, on the A7. I've sung its praises enough, I believe. Please like, subscribe, comment, follow me on Instagram. I'm Ed Homewood. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel saying now it's your time to go find some beautiful music, maybe hanging yourself from water on the violin, sit back and enjoy it, and just have a wonderful time. Thank you so very much. I appreciate your watching. Have a great day.